Well, I'm really excited to introduce you all to Steve Asalo, who's a general partner at Foundation Capital. Uh, he leads the, the firm's design practice uh, as a former longtime IDEO designer and longtime partner of Designer Fund. And he really uh, focuses on this intersection of design and tech and is actually the author of The Way to Design, which uh, he'll tell you more about. He's joined by Sam Novak, who's also one of our Bridge alums uh, and a senior product designer at Mode, a data analytics company that's helping analysts answer really important questions. And previously, uh, she was at TechSmith, and you might have used some of their products. So uh, please join me in uh, a round of applause and welcome Steve and Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Sorry, it's loud. Thank you, Enrique. Um, so I'm a general partner at Foundation Capital. Uh, we're a 23-year-old venture firm down in Palo Alto that invests in our early stage tech companies like Netflix and Lending Club, Sunrun, and Chegg. Um, but in a prior life, I was actually a product designer uh, at IDEO. This is this way back machine here. I worked on a whole bunch of things from Nike sunglasses to anesthesia delivery devices and uh, the last great desk phone for Cisco. Um, and I've been in venture action now more than 10 years, but I can tell you I'm struck by the fact that when I meet with young designers today who want to become entrepreneurs, who want to be uh, founders of companies, I'm still struck by the fact that there just aren't that many tools um, and resources out there outside of things like Designer Fund. So a few years ago, I decided I wanted to do something about that to help them. So I wrote uh, this book. Uh, it's The Way to Design. Some of you have copies of it. It was over here before. Um, and um, you can download this for free on thewaytodesign.com. Uh, or you can actually listen to the audiobook on SoundCloud. Or if you have to have a hard copy, it's over on Amazon. Uh, or just find me later. Um, but what it really is is a simple thing. It's just a guidebook uh, for three things for designers who want to become designer founders. That's thing one. Two is really um, about how to build a design-led, a design-empowered company. And then three, how to use design to have more meaningful impact in the world. One such design-empowered company is a company, Mode Analytics. You're going to hear more from Sam in a moment. Um, I led the Series A here back almost four years ago in 2015. And at the highest level, Mode is a collaborative, collaborative analytics company that really helps uh, businesses and data scientists within those businesses uh, deal with the sort of the most confounding questions that they have. Not the sort of superficial questions, but when they get past those, the really hard, gnarly ones that keep coming up over and over again. Now. When I invested in Mode, this is literally a slide from their Series A deck a long time ago, um, this is what the growth looked like. It was all up and to the right, breathtaking, 30% month over month growth. And this actually continued through most of that sort of Series A window. And then about six months after uh, we raised our Series B, the growth began to slow down. This was kind of scary. Uh, so we started uh, trying a whole bunch of experiments in sales and marketing about how to get this uh, back on track. And we ultimately converged on uh, this decision, which was a pretty, pretty big one at the time. And we kind of bet the company's future growth on this new product called Mode Studio. And Mode Studio was explicitly designed as a free product to help attract new users onto the platform. Now, if it worked, it would actually dramatically reduce our customer acquisition cost, a really big deal, and it would really also cement the company's position as the go-to solution among kind of the, the, the highest um, uh, quality data scientists and analysts, the folks who are the most discerning customers, if you will. But if it went wrong, we would actually put at risk some of these really big accounts. So we had customers, hundreds of customers at the time, who were paying us tens of thousands, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars for the not free version of the product. And so this was actually a really, really big deal for the company. But the way the team actually handled this challenge was really by working through a series of a number of small measures. So in my book, I dig into this concept uh, called leverage points. So this is borrowed from a field of, a body of work, a field of study some of you are probably familiar with called systems design. And the basic idea is as follows. It's when you begin to unpack a system, it's your job as a designer to understand all the different relationships between the components. And oftentimes what you will find is that a subtle or subterranean uh, aspect of, of the system just needs to be adjusted in some small way. You heard this from Enrique a few minutes ago. And that small adjustment can actually have this much more significant impact, this sort of renovation of the system, if you will. I think about this as the smallest nudge 
for the greatest effect. And the sort of the you know, system body system sort of analog to that, of course, is acupuncture points for your business. So how can you sort of apply some pressure here and have something else really positive um, happen somewhere else? So, and when you find them, you can unlock a lot of value, and Sam is gonna tell you how we did that at Mode. Thanks, Sam. Hey, everyone. So before coming to Mode, I worked for a screen capture and video software company that made tools like Camtasia to really help users share their story through video. And I quickly became captivated by this idea of taking something that many found to be really inaccessible and intimidating and make it as approachable as possible. And Mode really drew me in a similar fashion. Uh, we're an analytics platform that aims to help every analyst find success and share their stories through analysis. So I currently work on the advanced analytics and visual analytics product teams, helping both our core power users find success, as well as thinking of ways we can really expand the tool to reach an audience that may not be as comfortable writing code. So that said, today our primary tool for doing analysis is very much SQL, a query language used to help people talk with their databases. Now, out of curiosity, I'm gonna do one more poll. Uh, raise your hand if you're familiar or comfortable with SQL. Yeah, fair amount. So like many of you, I was completely new to query writing when I started at Mode, um, and I'm still learning plenty of new things every day. So before I dive into the project that we worked on, I want to give a little more context around Mode Studio and what was happening at Mode at the time. So in April 2018, we did something pretty bold. Uh, we launched a free version of our product for the first time, Mode Studio. Rarely does a company introduce a freemium model this late in the game, and especially after having such, such success with their paid offerings, but we saw a huge opportunity to make mode truly ubiquitous among analysts, to increase our funnel, and frankly, to completely transform our sales strategy. So just to reiterate, we're gonna take our product that people were already paying us for and give most of it away for free. The launch dates were aggressive. We pushed ourselves really hard to get Mode Studio out into the wild as quickly as possible. We redesigned our marketing website. We changed the way that we talked about the product. All of these little pieces had to kind of fall into place for this launch to truly be successful. And afterwards, momentum was really high. Signups were looking great. Design team was making all this new swag to celebrate. Things were good. And then the data started coming back. One day, uh, retention rates had dropped by 10%. And similarly, in addition to retention, users were also significantly less active. The majority of new accounts ran only a single query in their first seven days. Now, we knew that this seven-day retention metric was critical. Not only was it one of our biggest predictors of future success in Mode Studio, it also was a huge predictor of the likelihood of them eventually becoming paid customers and sticking around for the long haul. What were we up against? With concern from leadership, Brian, a PM, and myself were tasked with answering these two questions. First, if the tool is now free, why are people still leaving? And second, what can we do about it? Unfortunately, at this time, there was no clear sense of where or why the drop-off was occurring. We now had to get these churned users to come back and talk to us, and we were still unsure of how the transition to a freemium model would impact the business long-term. Another thing to keep in mind is this wasn't something that was happening early in the funnel. These users had gone through all of, the, all of the trouble to create accounts and to connect to their private data, which was a pretty intimidating and cumbersome step in a sign-up flow. So they had personal, meaningful data there in the tool to work with. Our approach. A lot of the product team wanted to jump to what we could do about it and begin to dive into iterating on solutions. With a desire to fix things, it was easy to start throwing out ideas. And while it was tempting to start attacking certain pain points or even suggest these solutions to turn customers, design fought to keep things really open-ended to first understand the why before jumping to the what. Despite pushback that research would take too much time, we all agreed that we needed more actionable insight. So design argued to start by sending out a quick, open-ended survey via email. After introducing myself as a member of the team, I would ask one simple question. What made you stop using mode? We spent countless iterations trying to come up with the wittiest subject line that would get the highest open rate and really encourage people to respond. 
But the numbers were painfully low and the results were really inconclusive. So we went back to the drawing board. With an improved subject line in hand and Amazon gift cards, we began to ask folks if they'd be willing to get on the phone with us for 15 minutes in exchange for a $50 Amazon gift card. We were quickly able to book close to 20 slots and received over double the response rate from interested participants as we had in the initial survey. Now, as I mentioned before, a lot of members of the product team already had ideas about what was causing the drop off and areas that we could improve around maybe onboarding and just new user experience in general. However, there's a huge difference between users bringing up not feeling comfortable writing SQL on their own and us guiding them there by asking if they had trouble. We were really cautious of any leading questions that would bias these results. If there's one thing Mode can rally behind, it's the importance of data integrity. And this is just as important with design research as it is with a trusted dashboard. So instead of getting feedback on an idea or asking about something specific, we went with a very simple set of consistent, open-ended questions and ended each call with space for the person to share any general feedback they had. What did we learn? After we finished our interviews, one takeaway really stood out to us. Users didn't know where to start when landing in the query editor for the first time. Half of the candidates mentioned not having a particular query in mind, and as a result, not knowing what to do next. And on the quantitative side, the data from our analytics team showed an extremely high error rate for new SQL writers. So remember this slide. If we hadn't done that design research and had only looked at those quantitative metrics, we likely would have worked on building features that helped users write and debug really meaningful work, when in reality, users just wanted to evaluate the tool without having a query to write. So the challenge here was that before doing much else with the tool, before really evaluating any other features, you had to first have a successful query. This was our opportunity. We had heard firsthand from users that after getting their first successful results back and then doing something valuable with them, like building their first chart, was really when they had that aha moment. This was something we could improve. But before building anything new, we wanted to start by assessing some existing areas for opportunity. So first, there was really a lack of hierarchy between pieces of the editor, which made it tough to know where to focus. Second, the data that I mentioned that users had gone through all of this work to connect wasn't particularly discoverable or even exposed by default. But the main issue was that generally, the page didn't inspire a ton of action. They often say a blank page is the most intimidating step for a writer. We just needed to help them get that first sentence on paper. Imperfect, small, but a starting point. So we got to work. We were all quickly drawn to this idea of previewing data. Many products, especially desktop SQL editors, already offered some way to allow users to preview data, whether their results would open in a light box or in a new view altogether. If we could show users what data they had to work with, maybe they would feel more inclined to start writing queries. But was it enough? Would it inspire action? And most importantly, could we get buy-in on the idea? We shared these designs early and often. We were constantly iterating with our internal analytics team, and we were able to share some early mock-ups with a few external customers. The feedback was all the same. While seeing their data was valuable, we needed to make those results more actionable. And then it clicked. What if we could help users understand their data and write their first query at the same time? So we made some updates to the plan. Instead of previewing data in a light box, which took you out of the editor and wasn't actionable, we'd allow users to click a play button on any table, and Mode would populate a simple query for you that would return a set of data. That query could then be used and edited after the fact. We called it click to preview. During initial feedback, we also learned that this wasn't only valuable for new and inexperienced users, but also with our power users. Data is constantly changing and evolving all the time, and analysts need to look at it and kind of understand it as it comes in so that they're able to work with it. But this led to a new debate. How could we create something user-friendly and easy to understand for our new users that wasn't patronizing or in the way for our power users? There was quite the debate between the design team and the analytics team. On the design side, we wanted to make sure this workflow felt as seamless, lightweight, and performant as possible. If we were gonna be generating all of these objects for you, we don't wanna overwhelm users by creating a lot of unnecessary cruft. 
The analysts, however, were really concerned with how it would feel to interact with an existing work, and were scared that we would blow away code they had already written or interrupt their workflow. There were a lot of perception and interaction fears on both sides, so we agreed to get it into staging to actually see if these assumptions were true. Now, if you didn't have anything written in the editor, it didn't really matter where or how we generated the SQL code. But to make it work for all use cases, we went with the design decision to inject the code at the top and run only that portion. This prevented us from breaking or overriding any code, and afterwards, you could just hit backspace and get rid of it. This quickly alleviated most of the concerns with the analytics team and actually opened up a lot of new contextual work roles for them. So putting it all together, compared to the intimidating blank page on the left, users could now instantly get results and start making charts with the click of a play button. In addition to this new CTA, we also improved some of the flaws we documented at the beginning to add better hierarchy and put a lot more emphasis on the user's data. And then the new results came back. So since the launch, seven-day retention rates have increased by 50% for new editors that use click to preview within their first 24 hours. Now, if we assume that translates into 50% more people using the product for longer, that leads to 50% more users hitting paywalls, 50% more sales calls, and 50% more sales opportunities from Mode Studio. OK, so maybe you're thinking, carrying 50% through all the way feels a little generous. But even if this increase in retention only leads to 5% more customers, the ROI is still 200 to 400% after only a year. And the quarterly return of that increase is five to eight times higher than the cost of developing the feature. And lastly, this didn't only provide value to new users. Within weeks, existing customers were already using this feature up to 30 times a day. Some takeaways here. First, I'd highly encourage you to get your whole product team in on research calls as much as possible. Second, uh, improvements to uh, new and inexperienced users can often be just as valuable and impactful for power users. Third, qualitative research and quantitative analysis are extremely powerful when combined. It helps give you a really holistic view and avoids limiting your scope of ideas to your product team's go-to solutions. And finally, small features can have a really big impact. Today, this concept helps a user write their first query. In the future, it could help them create their first chart. These kind of business metrics are great at informing discrete solutions, but the thing that is often overlooked is that they're also impactful in helping us change the way that we think about our mental models and where we can go in the future. Thank you. Amazing. Awesome. I know that's, you know, get into the details, but to show the results, I mean, I, I really just challenge all of you guys, you know, like, show me the money. Like, if our design work is so great, like, we gotta put up numbers, we gotta put points on the board. So I just really wanna thank you for, for stepping up to do that. Uh, before we transition to uh, our last, uh, but not least, our, our, our special uh, last speaker, I uh, wanted to spend one more uh, couple minutes, a uh, couple more minutes, just dive into how have you helped increase conversions, particularly around onboarding uh, in your company's uh, products? So please take uh, a minute each, try to find someone new. I know it's tough to rotate around, but try to connect with somebody else and I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes. All right, go for it. <laughs> 